Let's talk about sequences. There are two kinds of sequences. Let's look at each of these and determine what kind of sequence they are. We can see this one is increasing by two every time. If you're just adding to make the next number, that's called an arithmetic sequence. Over here, we're multiplying by three to get the following term. If you're multiplying by a number over and over, that's called a geometric sequence. Let's make a table to help us keep track of what we're talking about. When we talk about sequences, lots of times you'll see an N. An N just refers to which term we're talking about. So since this is the first number or first term, put a 1 here. The second term is 7, the third is 9, and so on. Here you may see a function notation, or sometimes you'll see what we call subscript notation, and that's where you have a small number or letter that's a subscript. It's important to know the difference in arithmetic and geometric sequences because that will help you write a formula. A lot of times in algebra you'll be asked to find the tenth term or the one hundredth term and yes you could sit here and write them out but it's a lot quicker if you can make a formula and use a formula. When you have an arithmetic sequence the common difference is the number you're adding to get the next term. So this common difference is 2. If it's increasing, this common difference should be positive. If it's decreasing, it'll be a negative. Now let's write an explicit formula for this sequence here. Here's the format we're going to use. We'll start with function notation. f of n equals, first you want to put your first term. So in this case, it was a 5. Then you want to add your common difference, so for us this is a 2, and it will be multiplied by n minus 1. This is the format you'll see. Now let's think about why this works. For the first term, if we plug in a 1, we get 1 minus 1, which is 0, 2 times 0 is 0, and so that will give us a 5 for the first term. That's why we have to do n minus 1. That way we won't add a 2 for the first term. But once we start plugging in these numbers for terms greater than the first one, we'll add a 2 every time. Anytime you need to write the explicit formula for an arithmetic sequence, you can follow that format. f of n equals, you'll put your first term, so f of 1 means what's your first term, and then you'll put your common difference, which we usually call d, and then you'll have n minus 1. That is how you write an explicit formula for an arithmetic sequence. Now let's try to use this if we wanted to find the tenth term. f of 10 equals 5 plus 2 times 10 minus 1. 10 minus 1 is 9. 2 times 9 is 18, add that to 5, and we'll get 23. That's the tenth term. Subscript notation is very similar, but it looks a little bit different. Usually we use an A, and then the small number here will be a N for now, because we don't know which term we want yet, equals the first term plus the common difference times n minus 1. For our sequence here, the formula in subscript notation would be our 5 plus 2 times n minus 1. They look very similar. Let's use subscript notation to find the 100th term. So we'll have 5 plus 2 times 100 minus 1. 100 minus 1 is 99, times 2 is 198, plus 5 is 203. Now let's look at the geometric sequence and write an explicit formula. For geometric sequences, you'll have a common ratio. 
The common ratio is the number that you are multiplying by over and over. So in this case, we're multiplying by three, so that's our common ratio. We can use that as we write our explicit formulas. For geometric sequence, the explicit formula will have f of n, if we're using function notation, equals our first term, so in this case it was five, times the common ratio, and we're gonna do an exponent. We're gonna raise it to the power of n minus one. So let's think about why this works for the sequence. If we wanna find the first term, we would have a one plugged in here. One minus one is zero. Three to the zero power is one. So we would just have our five. But as we plug in two, three, four, or any other number to find a greater term, then we'll be multiplying by three over and over and over that many times. This is the basic format you will see anytime you need to write an explicit formula for a geometric sequence. f of n equals the first term times the common ratio, we usually call that r, raised to the power of n minus one. Let's use this formula to find the tenth term in the sequence. Remember, n is always referring to what number term you want. It's not the actual answer, it just matches which term you're talking about. So we'd plug 10 in for n. And then you probably wouldn't be expected to do this by hand, so we can plug that in the calculator. Five times three raised to the ninth power. So the 10th term here is 98,400. And 15. Let's write the formula using subscript notation. So we have a, and that's a little subscript with an n, equals your first term times common ratio raised to the n minus 1 power. So for us, we still have our 5 times 3 raised to the n minus 1. Let's use that to find the 100th term. Again, let's plug that in the calculator, see what we get. 5 times 3 raised to the 99th power, because we'll subtract 1. And you can see here that's a really big number. That E is scientific notation. That means this decimal really moves over 47 places. This number is humongous. Um, you can see that geometric sequences are very similar to exponential functions. They start out growing a little bit and then they get really large really quickly. Sometimes with sequences you'll see recursive formulas. Recursive formulas rely on the term coming before the term that you want to find. They're not as useful, but if you have a sequence and you don't know where it started, you could use a recursive formula to help you keep determining the next terms. All right, so for a recursive formula for an arithmetic sequence, here is the basic setup. f of n equals f of n minus 1 plus d. And if you're going to work this out, let's say you're looking for the sixth term, you have to plug in the fifth term. Let's try it. So we're looking for the sixth term. Six will be n. Our common difference here is 2. So you see I have to know the fifth term in order to finish this problem. It's 13. Subscript notation will look like this. A and then your subscript is n minus 1. 
Again, that means the term before the one you're looking for. Let's write a recursive formula for our geometric sequence. Here's our basic setup. f of n equals our common ratio times f of n minus 1, the term that comes before. So let's say we want to find, oh, the fifth term. Our common ratio is 3. So we need to multiply 3 times the fourth term, 135. 3 times 135 is 405. Subscript notation, very similar. We have our common ratio times the term that came before. When we're talking about sequences, they'll either be arithmetic or geometric, depending on how they change. With arithmetic, you're adding. With geometric, you're multiplying. Both of those can be written with an explicit formula or a recursive formula. If you have an explicit formula, that's all the information you need. You can determine any term. If you have a recursive formula, you have to be given some more information. You have to be given part of the sequence or at least a number in the sequence to go by. With both explicit and recursive, you can write it in function notation or subscript notation. Sequences are pretty useful for describing patterns. So let's look at this pattern and see if we can determine how many boxes would be in the tenth term. To keep your thoughts organized, I like to make a little table. N refers to which term we're talking about. So let's just label the, these what we have here. And then we'll call this F of N. F of N will refer to how many boxes. So in the first term, we have two boxes. In the second term, six boxes. And then we'll keep counting to fill out our table, and then we'll start looking for a pattern. Looking at these numbers, I can decide whether it's arithmetic or geometric. Is it adding or is it multiplying? Well, it's adding every time. It's adding four. That makes this an arithmetic sequence with a common difference of four. To write a formula, I'll say f of n equals my first term, which was 2, plus my common difference, 4, times n minus 1. Now I can use this to find the tenth term or any other term that I want to know. 2 plus 4 times 10 minus 1, 4 times 9 is 36. 2 plus 36 is 38. 